What's up guys, my name's Brandon and today Apple released iOS 26.1 RC or release candidate to developers and soon to public beta testers. Now along with this release, we also got the RC version for iPadOS 26.1, watchOS 26.1, macOS Tahoe 26.1, tvOS and audioOS 26.1 along with visionOS 26.1. But of course, like always, we are talking about iOS 26.1 RC in this video. So starting off with the size of this update and you'll also notice by the way that it does say release candidate right here sometimes it does not say anything it just says ios 26.1 so an interesting note that i thought i would mention but anyways the size of this update came in at around eight and a half gigabytes on my iphone 17 pro max coming from the previous build which was beta 4. so let's check out the new build number for this update so we go into our settings general about the new build is 23b82 that will likely be the build of the final release. If it's not, we will have a slight change, maybe B83 or B84 instead. We'll have to wait and see when that final version comes out. But as far as the modem firmware for the iPhone 17 series, that is 1.10.05. All right, so now what's new here in iOS 26.1 RC? And the first thing you might notice when you actually get this software update in your settings is that there is no change log. Typically with the RC release, we'll have a more info button down here that will allow us to see the full change log from Apple about what has changed in this update but for some reason with iOS 26.1 we are not getting that now I don't know if that means we're going to see an RC2 before the final release or what but it's interesting that we do not get the change log here at least from when I installed this update so because of that we could be seeing even more new features and changes that we are not expecting or that nobody covered yet when the official version does get released which we'll talk about when that will be in a moment however we did get the you know uh, release notes from other 26.1 one versions like Mac OS that does give us some hints as to what we might be seeing in 26.1 as well for iOS and the first thing I want to mention has to do with the music application and that is that the auto mix feature now works over airplay so if you have the auto mix feature turned on where of course it turns your iPhone essentially into a mobile DJ like your own personal DJ with auto mix that now works over airplay also when it comes to FaceTime this was mentioned in the Mac OS release notes so we very well could be seeing this with the iOS as well but but it says improved FaceTime audio quality in low bandwidth conditions. If you're in a condition where your signal may not be very good and it's low bandwidth, the audio quality will be improved via software with 26.1. And also communication safety and web content filters to limit adult websites are now enabled by default for existing child accounts for ages 13 through 17. That's also mentioned in the release notes. But of course, easily one of the biggest changes in iOS 26.1 is going to be inside of our settings if we go into the display and brightness section we have liquid glass so this is a brand new toggle where you can choose your preferred look for liquid glass whether that's clear or tinted more of like a frosted glass so both of these are variations of liquid glass but now you're able to choose which version you like better and you can see right here kind of a preview of what that would look like you could also see this very good inside the music application when you're scrolling right here and also with notifications on your you know notification center right here you can see a big difference in how those bubbles appear so that right there is the clear version but if I go to tinted you can see how these look it's a very different look when you go the tinted route with liquid glass so some people might prefer this and now you have the option to change that another new feature in iOS 26.1 that seems to have been improved with the RC build is inside of music and that is the new feature where you can use your gestures right here to go forward or backwards with songs if you want to go to the previous song you swipe to the right swipe over to the left to go to the next song so you can do that with a little nav bar down there the little now playing bar or when you go into the full now playing view right here in music you can just swipe right here to go forwards or backwards from the text down here or just from up top you can use that and it's much easier to switch between songs than tapping these little buttons and speaking of swiping gestures also with iOS 26.1 and we just saw this in the fourth beta is that we now have the ability to disable the swipe over to go to camera gestures so you can see that when I'm swiping over here from the right hand side we do not pull up the camera like we used to be able to do for a long time but some people didn't like that we had you know that we had that option to do that so if you go into the camera settings 
settings here and you scroll down near the bottom we have this new toggle that says lock screen swipe to open camera so that is now an option so if you have that on by default that will allow you to swipe over to go into camera that is on by default by the way of course because that is the expected you know gesture that everybody's been used to for a while but you can now turn that off which is nice now also in the photos application when you select multiple items and you go to the three dots right here you will see that up top we have a change now so it says play a slideshow favorites and hide those are now up top just a slight change to the UI there and we do also have a change to the video scrubber in the photos application as well so this is what the video scrubber looks like now and when you tap right there that is when you can see the time elapsed and the time remaining on the left and right sides and it kind of comes out with this little animation right there so it's a little bit cleaner at first but then when you tap and hold on it it does show more details which is nice and then for the phone application we do have the liquid glass on the keypad now finally and we also have a new setting inside of the settings application if we go into phone right here there's a brand new setting for haptics you can now play haptics when a call is connected or dropped so before 26.1 that was just enabled by default you could not disable it now you have the option to disable haptics when it comes to the phone if you would like and one of my favorite changes in iOS 26.1 has to do with timers. So when a timer goes off, we now have a slide to disable toggle. So if we go ahead and set another timer here, I'm going to go back and lock my device. You will see that when it goes off, we have a slide to stop option. So it's now different and it's not just a button that you press to stop that timer. You have to slide it to stop like the old slide to unlock gesture from previous iPhones with a home button. So it's really nice. You can see how that looks there. This does also seem to be a little bit improved with the RC build specifically. So it seems to be a little bit more responsive and it just looks better. It works more reliably than it did in the past. And you can see how it kind of dims as you swipe over until you end it. Now, if you remember in iOS 26.1 at beta four, if we went into the app, Apple intelligence and Siri section there was no beta tag right here under Apple intelligence so we thought that it could be out of beta however Apple never signified that it was so that's why we thought it could be a bug and now here with the RC we're seeing that the beta tag has returned which does indicate that it was just a simple oversight from Apple that they just forgot to add the beta tag there to the glyph icon for Apple intelligence and Siri so Apple intelligence is still in beta so it was just a fluke with beta beta four, just FYI. Oh, and also in our settings, if we go into the privacy and security section and then scroll down near the bottom. So we go ahead down to the bottom right here, you will see that we have background security improvements. So this seems to be kind of a reworking of the old rapid security responses uh, feature that never really worked well, but you can see it says automatically install. And now it shows installed right here, iOS 26.1 release candidate. So this right here is new. And you also have these three dots right here that you can tap to remove the background security improvement and it says removing this will reduce the security of your iPhone and data your iPhone will restart so that is a new section here in iOS 26.1 and it's nice now that it shows the current version that you have installed but as far as anything else goes in iOS 26.1 RC specifically I'm not seeing anything else new as you guys know in these RC videos I don't like to cover every single new feature because I will be talking about every single new feature and change in the official what's new video when 26.1 launches for everybody so there are more features there are more changes that's just what I wanted to cover now for the RC build specifically and again we did not see any type of of release notes for this build which is quite interesting and if we do get a hold of those release notes i will put those down in the description and of course cover the new features in my official 26.1 what's new video also new in the code of ios 26.1 rc there's a new regional warning for users in india for the cleanup feature in photos and it says unable to use this image due to laws and regulations and there's also a mention in the code of compute module 17 comma 1 which is a new private cloud compute server running an m5 chip so shout out to Aaron P 613 for finding these in the code now as far as the release notes go I did want to mention two fixes here so we do have a fix now for the airdrop icon in the iOS share sheets before it had some visual defects at the corners but that has been resolved with the RC build we also see a fix for this devices might sleep unexpectedly while using certain apps on the lock screen like calculator timer and notes so that was a bug before that has also been resolved with the RC and when 
when it comes to performance, I am going to run a quick Geekbench 6 test, but I would not expect any type of major change compared to beta 4. So we could see a slight change because we don't have all the logging going on in the background, but I haven't noticed any change at first when I first installed it and started using this for the past you know hour or so. So we'll have to wait and see. Let's see what these scores are, but I'm not expecting any type of major change in general from beta 4. Okay, so we scored a 3843 on the single core and a 9867 on the multi core. And you can see how that compares to the previous build. So it is actually higher than beta 4 in both single core and multi core. So again, this could be a little bit faster, a little bit better in terms of performance because we don't have the logging going on in the background with the beta builds. But of course, I think the difference will be negligible. It's probably not going to be a major difference, at least not for me. I haven't really noticed a big change right away. Now, when it comes to battery life, I mentioned this before, but battery life in beta four was really good. It's actually the best I've seen in iOS 26 yet. So I would expect that to be about the same here with the RC, which is a good thing. I do think battery life has improved here with 26.1. So that is going to be good to see, especially if you had battery drain issues on the 26.0 builds. Now let's talk about what to expect next from Apple, because we did see this RC release on a really odd time. So a Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern time. So a little bit later, the later window of the day and also on a Tuesday instead of a Monday. So both of those are quite peculiar for Apple, at least this year. So I, I still don't think it's going to change much in terms of the final official release for iOS 26.1, but it's now a possibility. So I do still think we are going to see 26.1 final early next week, most likely still on Monday, November 3rd. But there's also now the chance of seeing it potentially on the 4th. However, I still think Monday Day is the safer bet because that's when Apple typically releases public software updates. So bank on that. And then after that, we should be seeing iOS 26.2 beta one go out as early as that same week, possibly even the very next day. So that's going to be a pretty big update as well. And I have had some people ask me about the 26.0.2 update that we heard about a while back that was in the analytics. I personally do not think this is going to get released anymore. So this may have been in testing by Apple, but we may just see those changes be kind of added into iOS 26.1 since we are just a week away from seeing that. So don't expect a 26.0.2. It is still possible, like very slightly possible, but I think that we're going to just see a 26.1 as the next official public release. But anyways, guys, that is iOS 26.1 RC. Stay tuned for my full official iOS 26.1 What's New video, where I will be covering every single new feature and change in the update. This video is more so just covering a, a couple of the major changes in 26.1 along with some new things with the RC build specifically. So stay tuned for that video. I will be posting it immediately when it does get released. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Also, let me know in a comment down below what you thought about 26.1 RC and how it's running for you. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.